Hello everybody! How are you guys doing? I am so happy to see you again. I am Anna Pomazanova, Rossmore Excursion Desk Coordinator. Welcome to a Round the World Travel Presentation. Today I invite you to go to Northern Africa and visit the beautiful country of Morocco. Simply mentioning the name Morocco evokes mysterious images of adventure and intrigue unlike any other. In spite of the proximity of Algeria to the east and Spain and Portugal to the north, Morocco is curiously not entirely alike either of its neighbors, with which it shares so much history. Morocco is a world of its own, presenting a series of unique experiences as the harshness of the desert slowly softens and gives way to lush green valleys, rivers, mountains, historic ocean ports, cities, and throngs of busy people. The Berber tribes inhabited Morocco during ancient times. In about 1000 BC, Phoenicians from what is now Lebanon founded trading posts in Morocco. They also founded the city of Carthage in what is now Tunisia. Soon, Carthage became the dominant power in the region. In 146 BC, the Romans conquered Carthage and their influence in North Africa gradually grew. During this time period, Christianity was introduced to the people and it gained converts in the Roman towns among slaves and some Berber farmers. Morocco remained under Roman rule until the 5th century AD. In 681, the Arabs began raiding Morocco and by 705, they were in control. The Arabs introduced irrigated crops in Morocco, rice, sugarcane, cotton, and more drought-resistant wheat. They also introduced Islam to Morocco. In 711, Arabs invaded Spain and soon conquered most of the Iberian Peninsula. In 789, Idris ibn Abdallah, the founder of Idris's dynasty, established a small kingdom in Morocco. Soon, he conquered large part of northern Morocco. His son, Idris II, made Fez the capital city. In the following centuries, Fez became an important center of culture and trade. In 859, the Islamic University was founded in Fez. Many prominent geographers, historians, philosophers, and poets worked here. By the middle of the 9th century, the state of Idrisids weakened and divided in a number of principalities. The end of the Idrisid dynasty also ended the Arab political control. In the 11th century, the Berbers dynasties replaced the Arabs. The regimes that followed and dominated northern Africa included the Almoravids, the Almohads, the Marinids, and others. The city of Marrakesh was founded and became the capital. In the 16th century, the Saadi dynasty took control over a major part of Morocco. The Saadian Sultanate reached its peak during the years of 1578 through 1603 in the time of Ahmed al-Mansur, known as the Golden One. He established trade and diplomatic relations with Spain. Agriculture and the sugar industry were developed. The capital city of Marrakesh was restored to its former glory. However, after his death, the dynasty declined. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Morocco's independence was able to be maintained by 
Alawite dynasty in spite of Spanish and Ottoman Empire aggression. Alawite dynasty remains the current Moroccan royal family. However, in 1912, Morocco was forced to become a French protectorate. The capital was moved to the city of Rabat on the coast. Morocco remained a sovereign state under the protectorate, but the Sultan only reigned and was not the ruler. Naturally, the Moroccans resented their loss of independence, and the whole country was not subdued until 1934. Morocco gained the independence in 1956. Hassan II became king of Morocco in 1961 and he reigned until 1991. A constitution was drawn up in 1962, followed by another one in 1970. However, the king survived two coup attempts in 1971 and 1972. Then, in 1981, there were riots in Casablanca. In 1996, Morocco was given a new constitution and in 1999, Mohammed IV became king. Today, Morocco is a fast-developing country. It is known for being one of the most tolerant of the Arab nations. The country is relatively safe peaceful and stable. Moroccan people, both Arab and Berber, are also noted for their warm hospitality and warm, friendly nature. Morocco has everything you could ever hope for in a travel destination. Snow-covered mountains, vast canyons, beaches of white sand, not forgetting the masterpiece of Northern Africa, the Sahara Desert. The borders of Morocco are as varied as its history and culture, with Algeria and Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea and the mighty Atlantic Ocean, all lending their own unique influence to the ever-alluring Moroccan story. There are many ways and many places to start your own Moroccan adventure but I recommend starting in the vibrant and enigmatic city of Marrakesh. While it's not the capital of Morocco today, that designation goes to Rabat, Marrakesh is one of the most popular Moroccan cities for tourists to visit. Marrakesh is both like and unlike what you would probably expect. It's both ancient and modern, loud, chaotic, and exotic. The old city of Marrakesh, the Medina, dates back to 1062 when the city was founded. It is without a doubt the main attraction for most visitors. Marrakesh is called the Red City because of the red sandstone walls that surround the Medina. Vibrantly colorful marketplaces and streams of people flow through its narrow, maze-like streets. There are literally thousands of shops to explore, full of spice pyramids, hand-woven rugs, and an ending supply of other foods, crafts, and artifacts. Be prepared to make way to motorbikes and donkey carts and everything in between. Listen out for the shouts of Balek, Balek, warning you to move over. Medina has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985. To escape the chaos of the Medina, there are a few spots you can duck into for a bit of peace. One is Le Jardin Sacré, or Secret Garden, an elegant palace complex in the middle of the Medina with relaxing gardens. Pop in here for a coffee or tea break at the cafe. Another popular spot to visit within the Medina is the Ben Yosef Madrasa. 
Today, this is one of the largest Islamic colleges in Morocco. It is known for its incredible architecture and ornamental details. Kutubiya Mosque is over 800 years old. This beautiful mosque has become the symbol of Marrakesh. Please note that non-Muslims are not permitted to go inside and can only admire it from the outside. Another historic highlight of Marrakesh is the Sa'adian tomb site. The tombs hold the remains of important figures from the Sa'adi dynasty, which ruled Morocco from 1549 to 1659. The tombs were lost after the dynasty ended and were only rediscovered in 1917. The highlight here is the hall of 12 columns. This mausoleum was built for Sultan Ahmed El Mansur. It was built from Italian Carrera marble and has delicately detailed ornaments and of course plenty of gold. You'll likely have to wait in line to peer into this particular mausoleum, but it's worth the wait. Next, walk over to Bahia Palace. Bahia literally means brilliant or beautiful, and you can see why. Bahia Palace was built in 1860s by Sai Musa, the powerful Grand Vizier of Sultan Hassan I of Morocco. His intention was to build the greatest palace of its time. After Sai Musa's death, his son Ahmed ben Musa, also known as Ba Ahmed, took over the palace. Ba Ahmed was even more powerful than his father, serving not only as Grand Vizier, but also as a regent of Morocco during the reign of the child sultan Abdalaziz. He extended upon the existing palace, bringing in the renowned architect Muhammad al-Maki and some of the finest craftsmen in the country to create the palace we see today. Each room of the palace was decorated in truly elegant Moroccan style with carved stucco and cedar wood. The brilliance of the palace was enhanced with the addition of lush gardens. Ahmed ben Musa died in 1906 and the palace was looted by his concubines before Sultan Abdalaziz, the former child sultan, arrived, carting off as much as possible to his own palace. Luckily, the palace itself was undamaged. Starting in 1912 and for the time of the French protectorate in Morocco, Bahia Palace housed the resident general and some of his officers. Today, Bahia Palace remains remarkably well preserved and largely the same as it was during the time of Ba Ahmed, minus all the furniture, which have never been replaced. Visitors today will find most of the rooms empty. But this lack of furnishings doesn't detract from the splendor of the palace. Bahia Palace has 150 rooms, only some of which are accessible to the public. Courtyards and gardens. Thanks to its magnificent decorations, Bahia Palace is one of the finest examples of Andalusian and Moorish architecture in Morocco. Marrakesh is home to a number of museums, but Dar Sai Said is without question is one of the best museums in the area. The museum showcases the very long and intricate history of arts and crafts all under one roof. The museum's collection of rugs, mats and carpets never fail to impress and particularly those which were made by hand 
in the high Atlas Mountains. Other artifacts on display include old Berber headdresses, weapons, carvings, ceramics, and so much more. When tired, take some time to relax in the building's beautiful courtyard with a fountain. Next, visit the Jardin Majorelle, a beautiful botanical garden created in 1923 by French artist Jacques Majorelle. After Majorelle's death, the garden fell into despair. The garden was purchased in the 1980s by fashion designers Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger who lovingly restored it and called it home. The garden has been open to the public on and off since 1940s and today is one of the most popular spots to visit in all of Marrakesh. The garden is home to more than 300 different species of plants. There are fountains and ponds along with a cafe and a bookshop. The former painter's studio at the heart of the garden has been transformed into the Berber Museum, displaying the personal art collection of Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger. Since Yves Saint Laurent's passing, a memorial has been erected to him within the garden grounds. Next to the garden, the Villa Oasis the former private home of Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger. The gardens here are equally stunning. You can also visit the Yves Saint Laurent Museum, which opened adjacent to the Majorelle Garden in 2017. Inside the museum is a sprawling collection of couture, accessories, sketches and photographs as well as some temporary exhibits, a research library with over 6,000 volumes, a 150-seat auditorium, a bookstore, and a terrace cafe. In the afternoon, get a taste of Moroccan opulence at one of Marrakesh's top five-star hotels. The Royal Mansour was opened in 2010 and is owned by King Mohammed IV, meaning the royal part of its name is literal. The hotel offers an afternoon tea service in several of its indoor spaces. You can choose from Moroccan tea served with mint tea, Moroccan pastries and Moroccan pancakes, or a French tea or a more traditional English tea. Later, visit the Jema El Fana, Marrakesh's main square. The sprawling Jema El Fana square is said to be the busiest square in Africa. During the day, it is filled with vendors, snake charmers, and henna ladies. At night, the square transforms into a street market with tents and dining tables being put up and taken down each and every day. You can watch all of this happen from above at one of the many rooftop cafes that surround the square. Come here to watch the spectacular sunset. From Marrakesh, travel over the high Atlas Mountains with exhilarating panoramic views and cool mountain air to refresh you after the stiffing heat and energy of the city. Then visit the Ait Ben Hadou, a fortified Berber castle full of enchanting kasbahs. Ait Ben Hadou was once a major stop along the caravan route between Marrakesh and the Sahara. The striking fortress of southern Moroccan architecture is from the 17th century and contains a mosque, two cemeteries, Jewish and Muslim, a public square, and some houses. 
Despite not being completely abandoned, five families are still living inside the fortress. The earthen architecture is vulnerable to weather and lack of care. The fortress received some care and restoration between 2007 and 2012, using as much wood and as many earthen techniques as possible to keep the site historically preserved. One of the remaining families opened a traditional cafe to give visitors an overview of the ancient lifestyle in the fortress and as a way to preserve their tradition and heritage. A UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1987, Eid Banhadu was a set for many international films and TV shows like Game of Thrones, Lawrence of Arabia, and Gladiator. The Datis Valley is the perfect way to experience a true Moroccan oasis. It is formed by the Datis River which flows down from the high Atlas Mountains, providing life to the lush green vegetation that grows along the length of the valley, surrounded by otherwise dry and rocky landscape on either side. The multicolored walls rise from the valley floor as high as 1500 feet in some places and make for a spectacular backdrop. If you feel an adventurous, experience the magic of the Sahara Desert in a small desert village of Merzouda. Spend the night in a fully equipped tent camp in the middle of sand dunes with drum music and a warming campfire. You'll also have a chance to take the most amazing pictures as the sun sets over the dunes. In the morning, settle up for a thrilling trek through the dunes on the back of a camel, an unforgettable experience. Finish your Moroccan vacation by spending a couple of days in one of the coastal cities. While some of the areas like Asora and Agadir have been developed with beautiful resorts, water sports, and many other amenities. Plenty of areas like Safi and Asila remain untouched and unspoiled, a true representation of natural beauty. The best time to visit Morocco is during spring from mid-March to May or fall September to October when the weather is warm and pleasant. Unlike the cold temperatures and snow of winter or the scorching heat of summer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on Morocco. It's really a beautiful country and worth a visit. Thank you so much for being with me. I will see you next Wednesday for another Around the World travel presentation. For now, Please stay safe and healthy. Goodbye.